Oh my gosh, I'm missing a whole section. I'm missing the signature of the book. Ah, what am I gonna do? There's not very many American writers more famous or influential on America than this guy right here. Yeah, Samuel Clemens, or Mark Twain, as he's uh, known by his uh, pseudonym. This past summer when we were in Gibbons, uh, we found uh, what appears to be an 1885 first Canadian edition of The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, one of his most famous books, um, and it is both uh, beloved and controversial all at the same time uh, because of the language and the tone of it in places but um, it's it's an interesting discussion because it uh, is a reflection of its time uh, such as it was um, and well it, it's a good discussion there's uh, pros and cons on both sides of it. anyway uh, I am going to get started on the repair and identification of that volume we found. One of the challenges I regularly face trying to identify Canadian first editions of uh, American authors or, or British authors, but more typically American authors, is where were they printed and uh, what plates? The plates are the actual pieces of metal that go into the press and they would print the pages off, bind the book up, and away it goes. Uh, now, sometimes they would use plates that were produced in the UK, or they would use plates produced in the US. Uh, if it was an American book, they not often would those plates be reproduced here in Canada and then printed. They would get a set uh, a copy of the set of, of the plates and, and print it here, or they would just get the printed... Um, uh, they change the the publisher name on the bottom of the title page, for instance, in the copyright page. So they print it in Canada. Um, so sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't, um, and it can be difficult, uh, especially when you go back to the 1880s, uh, about exactly where was this book printed. Um, so we're going to try to figure that out here on our copy of uh, Huckleberry Finn. Um, Apparently, uh, it looks like the very, very first edition of this book, uh, by months, was printed in the UK and not in America, which I find very interesting. Anyways, let's look at our uh, Canadian edition here and see what we can find out. One of the booksellers refers to the lining on this spine, uh, and, this, and this is further to, was it uh, bound in Canada or bound in the U.S.? And uh, doing some repairs on the copy they had, when they revealed the uh, the spine and it was open like this, they found that the binding had been built up with uh, contemporaneous clippings from a Boston newspaper, uh, leading them to postulate that the Canadian edition might have indeed been bound in the U.S. Well, there is no crash, or sometimes it's referred to as mull, uh, on this copy, which again is a little weird because like uh, the spine piece is missing, right? It's I wish I wish we had something of it here, but we don't. Uh, yet this this is completely clean along here. Usually um, the crash is is visible, and and the crash is the um, it's like a weave, a text weave of cloth. It can be paper, it can be all sorts of things depending how. Uh, fine or cheap the uh, book binder was but nothing there so it doesn't help us there either well i'm going to go through the points that i have that will help us identify this edition uh, again it is uh, purportedly a first canadian edition published by uh, dawson brothers in montreal in 1885 and the first point uh, that I'm going to refer to. And I got these from uh, a couple of listings online from some well-respected uh, book dealers um, that sell on the internet and, of course, have stores uh, both located in the U.S. 
uh, I, I trust their uh, judgment and their experience. And um, it's not uncommon for uh, book dealers and people like myself to go to other listings and see what they refer to to help them identify first edition. So the first thing both of these uh, sellers had mentioned was that it is maroon cloth with gilt letter or... Uh, um, well, one refers to it as maroon, one refers to it as red, um, gilt stamped or gilt lettered, um, which this clearly is not maroon or red, it's blue. There is no gilt anywhere. Matter of fact, there's absolutely nothing on this board that I can find except these blind stamp rules that you can see on the now, there might have been something up in here at one time. You can see there's something was there, and these uh, blind stamped rules obviously enclose something. But it's not maroon. There's no gilt present. There's We don't have a spine piece, so we can't use that as part of a reference point. So um, right, out of, right out of the gate, I'm thinking this is... Uh, a later state or a variant state and we will talk about states in just a second so we get the title page it's all good um, let me see I'm just gonna refer to my notes here because there's a lot of them so there uh, it's 174 illustrations and this is uh, oh first of all Okay, we're going to look and it says, yes, Montreal, Dawson Brothers Publishers, 1885. But it also says, entered to the Act of Parliament of Canada in the year 1884 by Andrew Chateau, in the office of the Minister of Agriculture. That would be Chateau of Chateau and Windus Publishers in the UK, which we had talked about earlier. As we just saw on the back of the copyright page, one of the sellers that I'm uh, that I'm referring to notes the early, where does he say, um, early copyright notice dated 1884, and that is certainly present. And uh, the copyright page says 1885. Now the other seller doesn't mention that early copyright date of 1884, which I find interesting because usually um, all those sorts of dates would be mentioned in the listing. So here's the illustration, the frontispiece, uh, which is opposite the title page. Um, and it is exactly uh, the illustration that we want to see there. It's Huck Finn, he's holding his rifle, he's got a hair in his hand. But I can't find um, yet any uh, references to colored illustrations, and clearly these are uh, colored. Now, at first I thought maybe someone had taken, you know, pencil crayons to this at some point in this book's life but there are other color illustrations throughout as well so uh, I, I think they belong but I'm gonna have to do a little more research on that particular one one of the other points this book should have is that it has 366 pages which this copy does so that's a good thing uh, there's some points on the illustrations that we are going to look at uh, sometimes there's discrepancies between uh, the illustrations that are listed at the front of the book and where the illustration actually appears. And there, uh, there's certainly one in this copy that uh, is a first point that we're going to check and see if it's there. So here's our uh, illustrations list. And you can see there are lots of them. If we look at this one, it says, Him and Another Man should be on page 88. Well... I'm going to flip this open, and if we look at page 88, it is not there. It is actually page 87. There it is. Him and another man. One of the listings I'm using refers to um, page 161 has the signature mark 11. Well, the signature mark is there 11 
and it's on page 161. I'm not sure why, <clears throat> excuse me, why this is uh, an issue. Uh, and the signature marks are, oops, used to identify individual signatures. As you can see, there's, these are still sewn, but not for long. That is one signature. So each one has a number on it. And the next one is number 12. Um, so I'm not sure if it's out of place or what the issue is, but on our page 161, there is the number 11. Well, this is a first for me. I have never uh, encountered uh, an issue point like this before, but um, a number of different sellers have listed this as a, as a point identification. Um, this is on page 283, which we are on. Uh, there is a straight fly on the gentleman in the illustration. Um, apparently... In some further editions, there was what should we say one you know one seller identified it as a um, well a noticeable bulge. We <laughs> we we do not have one in our illustration. So one of the sellers refers to their copy as very interesting mixed points which we have just been looking at. Uh, the other one refers to some of the states as the third state. Um, and there's, sometimes you get books that, uh, and like we think this one is, is might be a later printing. It's not the actual first, although I'm not sure, um, because they talked about the red or maroon boards with the gilt uh, titles on it, and ours doesn't have that. Um, but sometimes you would get uh, copies that had various states uh, mixed into one book. So it had points from a first edition. It was missing points from a first edition. It, it had a variety of things mixed into it. <clears throat> and uh, it, it's just the nature of the book business. Again, especially from, you know, the 1880s in and around there, they, they were just kind of banging stuff together and selling them, especially if they were selling well. It's... Uh, you know, put it together, get it out there, and let's let those Canadians buy those books. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to read something from one of my reference books. Uh, excuse me for reading, but, you know, not as smart as I look. State variants. They are typographical variations that exist within a single edition of a work. So it could be issue, uh, state, and points. Uh, state variant exists when stop press corrections are made. Additionally, bindings can be distinguished by states. Binding in the first state, and our copy is a different state. Um, so there could be different types of illustrations. It has guilt titles, it doesn't have guilt titles, that sort of thing. Uh, states and bindings can be with the cloth used, the decoration on the covers, the end papers that were used, the method of sewing or gluing, or any other variation that distinguishes one manifestation of an addition from another. Yeah, so <laughs> sometimes it's impossible. Uh, but most times we can get a really good idea. And I think, I think we know that we have a variant state of our Canadian first edition of Huckleberry Finn. So I pulled a real fast one on myself. Uh, before we got started on this, I was looking through the book and making sure that I had everything in place and all the pages were there and I noticed on our very first front page, yes, and it's, I'm going to have to reattach it, but um, on the back of it it says page 18. Oh yeah, there's one of our uh, additionally colored illustrations. Uh, anyway, so page 18, I thought, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, uh, and there is no page number on the very Oh my gosh, I'm missing a whole section. I'm missing the signature of the book. Ah, what am I going to do? And then I flip back, I flip back, and here, like on the cable, table of contents page, uh, there's number 12 up in the corner. So I go 12, 13, 14. So page 1 is actually page 7. So <laughs> I don't have enough stress in my life. You know, I have to create it for myself. 
Right now, we're going to get started on the repairs and preparation for repairs for this book, and we are going to get it uh, prepared, put back together, and then we're going to do some kind of a leather binding on it. But I got a lot of work to do before we actually get to the binding part of it. You know, if I had a camera operator, I wouldn't have to walk way over there, set the camera up, then walk all the way back up. Okay, enough. You guys hear me complain enough that I don't have a camera operator. So here we go. We're going to get started on our repairs. So uh, really looking forward to this one. It's going to be a, it's going to be a fun project. Uh, I'll keep you posted as we go through, and. Um, Hope you enjoyed this uh, first part of our restoration of the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Uh, we'll see you next time on the next adventure for Bailey the Bookman.